Hi, I'm scientific illustrator Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Create Seaside Daisy step-by-step -step painting instructions video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Nature Sketch Create step-by-step -step painting instructions to paint the Seaside Daisy. Help this tiny business by clicking that like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and shopping for future lesson crates at naturesketchcreate.com. First, collect all your materials, make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, and don't worry too much if you think you might have made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. So you'll want to make sure to tape the transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper. And you just want to make sure whatever you're transferring is over the watercolor paper. Um, if you want to transfer the whole punch line, just make sure that those are lined up. But other than that, you don't have to worry too much. It can be a little bit over the paper on some spots and it's totally fine. And take your graphite transfer paper. As you can see, I've used this many, many times. And you can use yours over and over and over. And you wanna have it dark side down, light side up. Place that on top of your watercolor paper. And then Gently press it down flat and then start anywhere you like and just draw a line by tracing over one of the lines. It doesn't have to be exact, just do your best. And then flip it up by while holding one side to see that it's actually transferring and that it's transferring dark enough. And you'll want to see these lines at the end when you're done painting your watercolor so that you can redraw them at the end as well. So you don't want it super dark, but you don't want it super light either. So it's kind of a medium pressure to create those lines. And just go ahead and go throughout and trace over all the lines to transfer them. And this is meant to be relaxing and meditative. So either put on a podcast, an audiobook, some music, And just take your time, relax and transfer those lines. Maybe you wanna sit outside. And if you don't get them exact, that's okay. This is just a sketch, it's gonna be imperfectly perfect and unique to you. So just go ahead and go throughout and trace over the lines to transfer them. You can use your finger to help guide you and keep track of the lines that you've transferred. You can also use a fine tipped colored pencil or colored pen. It'll be easier to keep track of those lines. So you can flip your image up and down while holding down one side gently to see if there are any marks or lines you missed. I always end up missing a few things. And if you still don't add them at this point, that's fine. You can always add lines later as well. It just helps to have them in now. I'm going to outline the common name by drawing over the black of the text on the inside and the outside of it. Since my pencil tip is a little bit smaller than the text itself. And then I'll just trace right over the scientific name in order to transfer that.
When you're all done transferring the lines you want transferred, go ahead and remove the graphite transfer paper. And again, even though it's been used many, many times, I can use it again. Save that to the side. And then remove the tape from the back of the watercolor paper. And remove the tape from the transfer image. I can reuse this tape since there isn't a lot of paper stuck to it. So I'll save that to the side for later. You can also compost or trash your tape if you need to. And I like to use the transfer image to protect my painting while I'm painting it. And sometimes I have some grease on my hand that I don't want to transfer over. Or I might smudge something and this can help a lot. So I'll save that. I'll put it to the side for future use if I need it. And then take your kneaded eraser. This eraser is important versus this eraser. This eraser, if you use it over the paper, it might rough up the paper too much and then the watercolor won't behave the way you want it to. So you want to use this gentler kneaded eraser if you want to lighten or erase marks. And you can use it by just rubbing over a spot. You can see you erase that mark pretty nice. Or you can lighten spots by just dabbing over it. You will want to make sure it's clean and doesn't have any graphite on it when you use it though. So just kind of knead it to a light gray spot. And then you can erase any smudges, unwanted marks, or lighten any marks that you want. And now I'm ready to move on to step two. Step two, paint in the daisy yellow and lavender. First, mix the daisy yellow. Take the 32H raw sienna. Make sure to shake it up to make sure it's well mixed. Sometimes the pink pigment does settle on the sides, although these are very beautiful, highly concentrated colors, so you don't need to worry too much if there's a little bit that isn't mixed in. So one drop of that. Shake up the 2H gamboge and one drop of that as well. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to erase a little bit of water from my water brush by squeezing gently on the barrel. You see a little bit comes out. And mix it up. If you're using a regular paintbrush, you can just add a little bit of water from your water vessel. Dab it off on my towel and then test it out on my paper. Looks like the right color. And then I'm going to add lots of water to the side and I'm going to create a wet light color in my palette. So it's going to have a lot of water added to it, making it appear lighter when I use it to paint. So it has less pigment in it and more water to it. So it's wetter. And dab it off onto my towel. Test it out on my paper. And I want a little bit lighter than that even. So I'm going to just add some more water. Dab it off onto my towel and test it out. That looks good. And I'm going to use pick some more up. I'm going to dab it off on my towel and I'm just going to add it to all of the areas I see in step two's image. So that includes all the disc florets and disc florette buds here in the center of the flower head. And you can add that kind of like you would with a marker or pen and just kind of fill it in. Difference is you have to pick up more paint when you need it. And sometimes you have to, you can move the paint around and like with a marker, you can't really move your color around. And then I'm going to add it just to all of these areas here. And if you need a finer tip, just kind of roll the tip on your brush. And I'm going to start left to right and fill in each space one at a time. I find it's a little easier. There's a little hair there. I can take that out later. It won't leave a mark. I move left to right so I don't smudge it since I'm right-handed. Be a little different if you're left-handed. And again, I'm just filling in the space like I would with a crayon or a marker. You can kind of move the color around a little bit though if you need to. I 
and I have all the space filled in. So next I'll mix the daisy lavender after cleaning off my brush really well. So my brush is clean, there isn't any more pigment coming out of it, it's clear. And mixing the daisy lavender is just two drops of a 36H ultramarine red violet. And you could use one drop, but I like to have a little bit more to work with, so I use two drops. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that when I mix it up, just to help it move a little bit better. If it's too pigmented, it won't move well on your paper. Too dry, too pigmented, is more paint pigment to water. So I'm gonna dab it off onto my towel, test it out on my paper, and see that's the really dry pigmented, but it still moves pretty good. It's not getting caught on my paper too much. And I'm gonna take it to the side. I'm gonna use the wettest, lightest version of this color. So I'm gonna take it to the side once, add some water, and then I'm gonna take it to the side again and add some water, because I want it really light and wet. So a lot of water in my palette, not to the paper. So once I do that, I'm gonna dab it off on my towel and test it out. That looks like the right color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that and I'm gonna add it to all of these petals or ray florets. Actually, it looks a little dark still. I'm gonna go ahead and dab it off on my towel. Add a bit more water to this. This is just a sketch, so it's okay. There's a little too dark on the one spot. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add that. It's a bit dark. And sometimes color mixing, getting the right color can be a little difficult, even with a formula. So a little bit too much pigment. So I'm moving some of that pigment to the side to lighten it up. And before this dries, I'm gonna work on spreading that color. Kind of move some of that pigment. So basically I'm just taking that pigment and moving it the other side using a little bit of a damp brush. And I'm not worried too much about getting outside of the lines, it's just a sketch and some of that paint being outside the lines makes it look kind of fun, stylized. And you need to pick up more paint at any point, just pick up a little bit more, dab it off on your towel and then continue painting. And you can move some of that more pigmented paint into those areas that are still a little damp if you need them to be a little darker. But I like the way that looks. It's imperfectly perfect, it's a little bit darker up here. Every time I paint, my painting turns out just a little bit different, which I think is fantastic and fun. So I'm gonna clean off my brush, let this dry, and move on to step three. Step three, paint in the daisy green and yellow. So first you wanna mix the daisy green by taking one drop of the 32H raw sienna. One drop of the turquoise blue. And one drop of the 2H gamboge. And go ahead and add a little bit of water to mix that up. Test it out, looks good. And I'm gonna use the wettest, lightest version, so the most water added to it. So I'm gonna get some of that pigment off of my brush first on my towel, and now I'm gonna add water to it here. Let's see if it's the right color. Looks good. And I'm gonna add that to the disc floret buds, so these very center part of the flower. It still looks a little dark. Every day when I paint, things turn out a little different, that's fine. 
So just the center. And then I'm going to add a little bit more water because it was a little dark. Dab it off on my towel. And then I'm gonna add it to the leaves, the stems, and the buds. We have all of it added. Go ahead and clean off your brush and pick up a little bit of the driest, darkest daisy yellow. Dab it off onto your towel before continuing. Looks good. And then add it to the disc florets here on the outside. Not to all of them, just kind of sparingly like you see in um, step three's image, just kind of here and there. You can kind of just dab it in like a little dots, or you can kind of do little tiny lines here and there. And if you need to, you can refer to your final reference image as well for that placement. So you want to preserve some of that lighter color, but also have some of these a little darker. Helps make it so it pops off the page a little bit. Even though we're using just a few colors, it makes it look a little more three-dimensional with the variation of dark and light colors. And pick up a little bit more, dab it off onto your towel, and then add it to the seed head like you see in step three's image. And again, you can use your final reference image for placement as well. And don't worry too much about being exact. You can be creative with this. This is your painting and doesn't need to be exact because it's just a sketch. So just kind of add it in the same basic area. The watercolor is probably gonna do whatever it wants to, so just don't worry about it too much. Clean off your brush, let this dry, and move on to step four. Step four, paint in the daisy green and lavender. So go ahead and pick up a little bit of that daisy green, and you'll wanna add some water to it on the side here. It's okay if it kinda of bleeds a little bit. You can kinda of mix it to the side over here because it's getting a lot of that dark green. It's bleeding a little bit too much here, so I'm gonna move, take this color and move it to the corner here. It's empty space here and add some water to it. And I want a little bit darker. That looks like about the right color, maybe a little darker. Hmm, that needs a little bit more water added to it. Again, getting the right color can take a little bit of time. Maybe a little bit more green. Looks like the right color now. And then go ahead and add it to your painting. And we're gonna add it to the disc floret buds and the leaves, the flower bud, and the right side of the stems. So you can just kind of add it in here in this upper left area, kind of using a dot motion like this, so we can preserve some of the other color underneath. Pick up a little bit more, dab it off onto your towel, and then add it to the right side of the stem and the leaves. Like you see in step four's image. If you ever have too much water being released from your water brush, just dab it onto your towel. And clean off your brush. And then take some of this medium color, a dry dark, but not the driest darkest. There's a little bit more water added to it, but less water than your wettest lightest. And then dab it off onto your towel Test it out. 
That looks about right. And then I'm going to add this um, and I'll be careful not to touch the green part with my hand because it might smudge it or smear it. I'm going to add it to the flower head in a line motion um, to the petals or also ray florets. And I'm going to start in the top right to add that uh, and kind of let the paint pigment run out in my brush and we'll get, so it'll get lighter and lighter. So I'm going to kind of add it to these ends and down here next to the disc florets. And I'm not being exact at all. I'm just kind of adding in the same basic space, letting that paint pigment run out a little bit, adding some lines and then outlining the tips of these ray florets or petals and not being exact at all, just kind of adding it in. I'm not picking up more paint, I'm just going to let the paint pigment run out in my brush and get lighter. as I paint and that'll create a little bit of a gradient around the flower be a little bit lighter on this side where it's getting more light natural light hitting it so this area is a little bit more in shadow so it's a little darker Not by a lot. Add a few more lines in here to darken that area up a little bit. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that color, dab it off onto my towel, and just add it to the bud. Again, it doesn't need to be exact, just same basic space. And this should be dry by now because I'm not adding a lot of water to my painting and my paper itself. I'm adding the water in my palette. So once you've had that added, go ahead and let this dry and move on to step five. So my bud is still wet, but my flower petals, the ray florets are, are dry. So I'm going to go ahead and add the next color. So I'm going to use this wettest, lightest Daisy Lavender, so the Wet and Lightener palette. I have a little bit of green in my brush, so I might kind of make sure I have a clean spot on my towel, clean out my brush, and pick up that color again. Dab it off on my towel and test it out. That looks better. I need a little bit of pigment, so I'm just going to do a little bit Looks like I got a little bit too much water in it. Dab it off on my towel and test it out one more time. Looks pretty good. Mix that really well. Dab it off onto my towel. Just a little bit on my tip of my brush. Let's see. Looks good. Okay. Dab it off on my towel after picking some up. And I'm just going to add that to the flower petals. I'm just going to kind of go through and add it in mostly to this dark area and then kind of a little bit on the top lighter area just to deepen that color a little bit pick up more when you need it if it ran out too much and just add it in deepen the flower color i'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush let this dry and move on to step six Step six, paint in the daisy gold and green. So first mix the daisy gold. It's just gonna be a couple drops of the 2H Gamboge. One, two, 
And I'm gonna use that at the full concentration. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to help it move well on the paper. And test that out, make sure it moves nice. Not too much water, not too much pigment. Dab it off on my towel after picking up some more. And then I'm just gonna add that to the discolorates. I wanna preserve some of the lighter color underneath. So I'm gonna again, just kinda of dab it through. Maybe add a little bit extra here on the bottom right half of the, the flower. And then I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna add the wettest, lightest color. Let's test that out. Looks good. I'm gonna add that to the disc florette buds just to deepen the color a little bit. So I'm gonna preserve some of that lighter color underneath. So not being exact, just kind of adding it in there real roughly. And I'm going to take this driest, darkest color, so the most concentrated color is more pigment to wa than water added to it. And it should still have some water in it, making it so that you can move it on your paper. And if it has too much pigment and not enough water, it will feel like it's getting caught on your paper and it won't move very well. So go ahead and add that in. Like you see in step six is image, and you'll just wanna preserve this middle line here. So kind of add the paint on the outside and then work towards that middle line. Pick up more paint whenever you need it, dab it off onto your towel again. I'm gonna go from the outside and then go in. So kind of outside and then go in towards that middle line there. Then add it to the right side of the stem here. And again, I'm gonna add it to the outside, kind of outlining the leaf, and that'll leave the center of it a little bit lighter. And down here, I don't really have any that I left blank, and that's totally fine. I got more, dab it off on my towel. So add it to the top part of the bud here. And then again to these leaves and buds up here as well, doing the same thing, the outline on the top. And again, lastly, on this last leaf, preserving that mid vein by painting and then got kind of close in the mid vein there. So I'll paint right below the mid vein. That way I can preserve a little bit of that lighter color in the middle. I'll clean off my brush, let this dry and move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. So when you start with the smallest tip micron, the 005 or 005, this is the smallest tip here. And I'm gonna redraw and redefine the lines that I transferred in step one. So you can use your final reference image or your transfer image or the image in 7A to determine where those lines go. And if you want some of your paint landed outside of the lines like here on this petal, you can draw and redefine that so that the petal is a little bit bigger or you can just leave it on the outside. So here on this petal, just leave it on the outside there. So it's up to you, you can do what you like. And again, this is meant to be meditative. So as you're redrawing these lines, go ahead and put on a podcast, some music, maybe sit and listen to nature, just relax and redraw all those lines. Probably going to be hard to draw all these floret buds and disc florets 
exactly in the same spot. So just kind of fill it in with circles that are about the right size. And then half circles on the outside. And you'll be able to see some of your lines as a guide, but don't worry about making it too exact. Just kind of add them in in the same approximate space. And don't get too caught up with the accuracy, just kind of relax. Enjoy the process. It's also helpful to re-outline the common name so you can fill it in with a larger micron a little bit later. And if you want, you can redraw the scientific name as well with this micron. And when you're all done, go ahead and move on to using the O1 micron. And you want to use it to thicken the bottom half right side of the disc florets and sparingly to the thicken the top half left of the disc florets. And then you want to use it to outline the petals, the stems, the leaves, the flower bud, and some parts of the seed head, like you see in 7a, and the final reference image. When you're all done with the 01 micron, go ahead and move on to using the 08 micron. So use the 08 micron, the thickest micron, to fill in the common name and then thicken just some lines throughout. And again, you can refer to 7B and your final reference image to add those lines in. And you don't want to outline everything just want to add some lines kind of sparingly throughout. It'll help the line variation will help make it so that the image pops a little bit more from the page, making it look a little more three-dimensional. And now I'm done. Great job and keep practicing. If you'd like to darken any of these colors a little bit more, as you can see, my colors ended up a little lighter than the final reference image. You can add more paint if you want. Just let it dry between adding the ink and the paint. Um, and you can test that it's dry just by dabbing your finger gently over it like that. But I think I'm done. I'm gonna leave it like this. I like that it has a little bit of variation. I like that every time I create a painting, it looks just a little bit different. We're done. I hope you had fun and had a chance to relax a little. If you have any questions or like to see a plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please leave it in the comments below. Next, you have some options what to do with your painting. You can punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook, frame it, gift it, send it in the mail to a friend to brighten their day. Also make sure to share it on our Facebook fan art page. Use the hashtag NatureCreateArt to have it featured on our social media. Thank you for joining me. You have created a painting unique to you. Make sure to check out naturescreatorcreate.com to shop for future lesson crates and click that like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel.